Every year, thousands of new actors move to LA, hoping to hit it big and become Hollywood's next biggest actor. But unfortunately, not every dreamer can make it, and statistically, most of them don't. A 2019 career survey shows that unemployment rates in actors hover around 90% and that as low as 2% of actors are able to make a living out of acting. Why is it that so many people don't make it in Hollywood? Why is it so hard to break into the acting industry and actually have a career? In this video, I plan on answering these questions, so stay tuned to find out why. Hello guys, it's Michaela Lysak. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if this is your first time seeing my face. Hello there. I make acting, screenwriting, and filmmaking content here on this channel. And if that content interests you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I know a lot of my viewers are aspiring actors. They're trying to make it in Hollywood. And this video might feel a bit discouraging for some of you, but I also want you guys to be aware that this industry is definitely not all sunshine and rainbows. In fact, there are more downs than ups in this industry. I've been in it for 10 years and I can tell you that from personal experience, you need to be well informed going into it so that you can have a better approach at going about your career. We're learning it here the easy way instead of out there the hard way. Like this video, I have your back. Let's get into it. You're an actor, you're looking to start your career, and what is one of the first steps? Well, some may say moving to LA. The city of angels, the city of stars, the city that, according to Fox News, has a cost of living that's nearly 12% higher than the rest of the US average. It's expensive to live in LA. You need a place to sleep, to rest your head, go to the bathroom. You need an apartment, of course. For a one bedroom or studio apartment, you're usually looking at around $2,000 per month in rent. But if you want a two bedroom or more, that'll be maybe like 3,000 or 4,000 and it can get up there. So rent is nowhere near cheap. You'll also need a car in LA because everybody can use in LA. If you're going somewhere, you're most likely driving and gas in LA is very expensive. You drive everywhere, so you're constantly gonna be using up gas. And you also have those pesky parking meters and just paying for parking everywhere you go in the city. Along with car payments and car insurance, those costs definitely add up. But we're not done yet. We also need to talk about actor specific related costs. If you're a new actor, you're definitely gonna be going to acting classes. At least I hope you are, at least you should be. So paying for acting classes, it really depends on where you're going for your acting classes, but they can get pretty expensive. And with all of that acting training, you're gonna wanna audition and try and book off your skills. So you'll need a headshot, maybe in like the 200, 400 range. And you'll most likely be putting those headshots onto self-submission casting sites because you're a new actor, you probably don't have an agent yet it's a monthly fee of maybe like 25 27 dollars for each of them for me i have about three casting services that i'm subscribed to you also need to buy a self-tape setup acting auditions really don't happen in person anymore so during a pre-read you're going to be taping it on your own and i have all the links to my specific self-tape equipment in this video if you want to check it out so yes things can get pretty expensive for the actor not just living costs and driving costs but also costs of just pursuing a career. And your first few auditions will probably be opportunities that you find on self-submission casting websites, which are mainly extra work, non-union work, student film work, and low budget work, which is not enough to cover the thousands of dollars that you're paying a month to stay in LA. This is why an actor will do their best to try and find an agent to get them higher paying jobs and higher quality opportunities. If you want a shot at being the next Netflix star or HBO star, chances are an agent is gonna have access to those bigger opportunities for series regular roles and leads in big budget films because they have those connections. Getting an agent is difficult for some people. It's super hard to find out who a good agent is without like trial and error and going through people who will scam you. It's really hard to find an agent who will give you the time of day because if you're a new actor and you haven't worked on anything, it's hard for an agent to kind of want to sign you because agents sign actors that they think will be able to book for them, an actor who they think can make them money. So if you're trying to get an agent but you don't have any credits under your belt, there's no buzz about you kind of floating around town, chances are it's gonna be hard for you to get into the rooms with bigger agents, legitimate agents. You might get meetings with scammy agents and cruddy agents. So let's say you've stood out amongst the crowd and you were able to secure an agent. You are signed with an agent. Now, well, the work is, it's still hard. You've moved out of the big pool of unsigned actors and now you're in the pool of signed actors, which is still a pretty big amount of people. Remember, when you audition for a role, 
there's only one spot. And there are hundreds and even sometimes thousands of actors competing for that one spot. The odds are also stacked against you. You audition and audition and audition until you're the one that can book something. But 90% of the time, everything you're auditioning for, you don't book. Everybody's journey is different, but almost every actor can tell you. You just should expect rejection. So you're auditioning and auditioning and auditioning, but all of that time you spend auditioning, you're not getting paid. You are trying to apply for a job essentially that you will be rejected from 90% of the time. So you have car expenses and you have a monthly rent to pay and you have to eat. The job you wanna get, there's so many people trying to get that one spot. Probability wise, it's, it's not looking good. It's not in your favor. And let's say you do book a job and usually your first jobs will be maybe little commercials cause you're non-union or co-star guest star roles on a SAG show, right? So for a co-star, you're maybe looking at $2,000 for pay, maybe a little higher. And then for a guest star, maybe like 6,000, really depends. But then you have taxes and you have your agent's commission and maybe you have a manager commission and that check is not enough to cover all of your expenses. You're gonna have to work another job to supplement your career and your living expenses because it's just not sustainable to be constantly auditioning all the time and there's very little reward except for like growth craft wise and this also shows that it's easier for people who come from a place of privilege to have a better chance at being successful in this industry you know if you're looking at a pool of actors and some of them don't come from a background where they have money saved up to pay for an apartment while they're just trying to audition and get in those rooms and set up their career, they're gonna have to move out and they're not gonna be able to stay in the city. But the people who come from a more privileged background will be able to stay longer and have a better shot at advancing their career forward because they've had more time. It's really survival of the privileged in LA, which is definitely very upsetting because there's a lot of talented people who may not be able to ever have a chance because of finances. God has blessed me with an amazing situation where a career would work, but that's not the case for a lot of other people. That's why I make these videos because one, acting classes are a lot of money. And so if I can teach you guys on YouTube, which is free for everybody, I can help you guys learn more about the industry. I give you guys acting tips. I give you guys advice because I understand how expensive it is. And I get so many messages of people saying, this is my dream, but I don't have the money. And I don't think money should be blocking people's dreams. I think it should be more accessible. As I make you know, an advance towards a career behind the scenes, because as you guys know, I'm going to film school. I am a screenwriter. I'm focusing on that right now because I want to be able to create shows and also in turn create more opportunities for people who may not have the money to go to LA. I would love to do casting calls for people who don't have agents because a lot of the times the industry is very gate kept and they keep their doors shut. I want to open doors and make things more fair for a lot of other people because it's really messed up in LA. That's kind of what I want to do. And if you want to follow my journey with all this, be sure to subscribe. We're changing things around here. The hardest part is getting in the room, is getting in front of people who can change your life because the pool of people who can change your life is very small compared to all of the people who want an opportunity. All of LA is filled with dreamers who want to get in front of these people, this small group of people, and they keep their doors shut because a lot of people want their positions. In order to get into the room, it's very much about connections. And like I was saying, you could be the most talented actor in the world, but nobody may ever know it because you didn't have the person to get you in the room or you weren't able to have somebody see your talent. The greatest actor of our generation could go completely unnoticed because they just didn't have the network, which is very sad. Again, this industry is not always about talent. It's about who you know, not what you know, as they say. So how do you even get those opportunities? Again, it's like all we've been talking about, working your way up the ladder, trying to get in front of an agent. And casting directors, the casting directors will show you to then producers and the director. If enough buzz around your name starts happening, like a lot of people try and jump on like what's 
what's hot. Another way you get into the room is if you are a product of nepotism, if you are a nepotism baby. So what is nepotism? The definition of nepotism is the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. So if you wanna be an actor and your parents work in the entertainment industry, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to become an actor because your parents already have those connections. I also wanna disclaim that there's a lot of nepotism babies that are super talented who are able to sustain their careers because of their talent, but it was also a lot easier for them to skip over everything we just talked about. I bet you that most of your favorite actors are actually products of nepotism. Here are a few examples of nepotism babies within the entertainment industry. Maya Hawke from Stranger Things. Her parents are Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. Euphoria actress Maude Apatow, I'm not sure how to say that, got her start acting in her father Judd Apatow's films because he was a director and producer within the film and television industry. She starred in films alongside her mother, Leslie Mann. These names are gonna get me into so much trouble, but Phoebe Denevar from the Bridgerton series, she comes from a family that has worked in the television industry for generations. Her mother, Sally, is an acclaimed television actress on the daytime soap Coronation Street. Timothy Chalamet and his family had a history in the entertainment industry because his mother was a Broadway dancer and his sister was an actress and his aunt and uncle are both filmmakers. Sofia Coppola is an American filmmaker and actress and her father is most famously Francis Ford Coppola who did the Godfather films. All of these people are talented individuals but their family line was already within those gates that are always closed shut. A lot of Hollywood likes to just only work within the gate not letting other people in, but kind of like recycling actors. You know, you see your favorite stars, they keep popping up in different types of movies. So it's a lot of networking within this little bubble and a lot of people trying to pop it and get through. LA and Hollywood works off so, so much nepotism. And that's why in LA and Hollywood, networking is such a thing. Everybody's always trying to network and try and you know get in the know with other people and it can really be a very toxic environment and there's so many fake people because a lot of people are users they want to get into that circle and so it's like oh like i want to you know be able to sit with them and talk with them it's just very toxic you just have to live by your own morals i guess i'm just getting real right now it's super important for all of you young actors just have something outside of acting. For me, what I think really helped, I grew up a child actor and I did not sacrifice school. A lot of young actors decide to homeschool. They just do it online and then it's like they kind of fast forward through all of their grades. They even test out of school. A lot of agents and managers will be like, try and get um, this test that will kind of make you a legal adult so that you can audition for non-minor roles and you can work longer hours. So it's a lot of this industry just trying to like, you know, speed up your youth so that you can work, 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 work and make people money. That's all that people care about, money. Have a life outside of that. A life outside of a business where people just wanna make money off of you. Stay close to your family and your loved ones and just self-care is so important because it can be a lot. And stay grounded spiritually. You know, some of you might not believe in God, but I believe in God, I believe in Jesus. And be grounded in your faith, especially in a place that is so dark and there's so many users. Let's start transitioning into the positive because I guess we're already doing that in a way. So how can you as a new actor beat the odds of this industry? Know what you're getting into. That's why I'm making this video. Be prepared, go into it with knowledge of how it works. Have a savings built up, set aside money every month just for a savings to maybe move to LA, invest in equipment. Honestly, I would say that you don't really even have to make the move to LA as everything is self-tape now. A lot of auditioning happens at home, so you don't even have to move to LA. You can move a little bit outside of LA, places where the cost of living isn't as expensive. Even though sometimes certain projects and agents want you to be based in LA just for conveniency, but I would say it's not as big of a deal breaker as it used to be. Keep training and keep learning and growing. And that's, I guess, the video. It may have been discouraging, but it's, definitely the truth. And if you can't handle the truth and if you can't handle disappointment, well then you, this industry is not cut out for you. You're gonna have to grow some thicker skin. You're gonna have to learn. You're gonna have to keep being disappointed because being an actor is all about handling rejection. 
I hope this video was able to give you guys a better idea of why it's so hard to break into the acting industry and sustain a career. Um, and if you liked it and if you appreciated this advice, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I have a lot more positive content that will come out and just things like that. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And if you want to follow me on my journey, my acting career and journey behind the scenes in the industry, becoming a screenwriter director, you can totally follow me on Instagram and I'll be doing that. Be making moves and making things more accessible for people who want to get into the industry. If you stay till the end of the video, comment clapperboard so that I know that you stayed. When I'm reading the comments, I'll be like, oh, okay they watched the whole thing. That's all for this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!